to Boston. And Boston is one to beat. And Boston's in the corner. What a try, the first try of the match. Karelia. Karelia. Inside to Murphy. Murphy going nicely away. Looking for Sullivan. Sullivan takes it. Sullivan was going to the corner. Sullivan's into the corner. And it's a great try by Sullivan. Sullivan, ah, oh, can he go, Sullivan, can he go? I think Sullivan will go up the end of the field. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. Everybody's saying go, 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 and he goes. What a try to Sullivan. Weaver, now inside from Edie, and Edie can run. Did a chance, Schubert gets this, he'll be in. He'll be in with Schubert, unless he can come across and take him. But the beard is in, and beard gets the try, a brilliant try. Australia is now attacking, and beard, and a kick by thrown in. Fairburn should have it covered, but he doesn't. In fact, the ball comes loose, and it's Australia with a very good chance. Britain having to get back quickly, McMahon in possession, and goal to dummy. A dummy and gone on the blind side and it's going to score. Walters, the good ball to Renoff. Renoff's in at the corner. Oh, it's a try. A try for Australia. In a hundred years of rugby league history, there was no more important month than October 1995. The Halifax Centenary Rugby League World Cup, and in this programme we're going to review the 15 matches that led to the presentation of the biggest prize in the sport at Wembley last weekend. Ray French and Joe Lydon have had the last week to form their opinions on everything that went on. We'll hear from them later. But the competition began with ten teams contesting three groups. Eddie Butler takes the story on from there. Group 1, four teams and two to qualify. Top seeds, Australia, home nation, England, Fiji and South Africa, the outsiders. Day 1, the top two came to the Twin Towers, but was Wembley the right place for the World Cup opener? A crowd of 41,000 said yes. Halifax Centenary World Cup about to get underway the top two seeds England v Australia from group one another 15 matches to come throughout England and Wales and away we go with Rod Wishart a long high kick well picked up by David Powell oh and that looks a little high but it's uh, England in the new style jersey the all white with the red cross Australian defence very flat, Tursley. 
It is. They, I noticed before, they're probably a little bit rusty, Australia, because they haven't, a lot of these players haven't played for a long time and they certainly haven't played together. Um, and they send a little bit rusty whether they're supposed to be left side or right side. Uh, but, uh, oh, there's a chance here for Barry John Mather. Now then, long striding, six foot five, but that's a tremendous tackle. Tremendous tackle from Brescia. Barry John Mather just couldn't make it to the line. But the first chance was there for England. Australia would have been better advised to push that ball out wide, but they're in charge. Fickler to Dimmock. Dimmock looks for support. Out here, Papalati going for the corner. It needs a good tackle. It's still in possession. Oh, good defence there from England. Bartram again to pay. Difficult forward to put down this Dean Pay. Australia edging nearer all the time. Tuvi, he'll switch the play. He does. Fickler, oh, beautiful sidestep from Fickler, and there's the first try to Manzies. Beautiful play. Australia done well here because what they did, they stacked their right left hand side, and England was spread out, thought they were going to spread the ball. Brad Fiddler soon the defence move up too quick, big step off his left foot, and uh, Steve Menzies backing up up the middle and uh, offloaded the Menzies and scored under the post. John Edwards. That's a good high one now then, that is a tester under Brescia. Oh, he's lost it! Almost a chance there for John Bentley. That's the first time that England have gone to the high kick. Brescia, as you say, covered it well, but at the last minute took his eye off it, possibly. Spilled the ball, that could have been a try for England if it had gone to hand. This is a good time to get the football. It's only about five minutes to go before half-time, and uh, they can put plenty of pressure on Australia here. Excellent effort from Andy Farrell, just to find his place to lose forward, uses his strength from the base of the scrum to get over the line. Paul Newler, not uh, been in the game too much, Ooh, almost in the game there, just held there by Aussie centre coin. And there is uh, the Hooter, a good, solid, strong performance from uh, England. 6-4 for Australia. 40 minutes to come, plenty of action remaining. At least the rain uh, has stopped, it uh, won't uh, trouble the players too much in the second half, and I don't think it's troubling these Fijian dancers too much either. Edwards again, another high one, the Tasta. He flicked it behind him, going for the line, Jason Robinson, oh, can't get it down, surely. He's on his back. He was fighting frantically to turn himself over. I think he knows in his own mind that he just didn't get it down. A couple of tackles remaining in uh, this sequence. Surely Edwards will want to move it wide. He does. It's a power, he's got Mueller out here. Mueller has got Rudnitsky. Mueller going in. Excellent tackle there by Coyne, on the sixth tackle, Chris Joint drives through, there's a chance for a try! Mr Cummings checks with the in-goal judge, and he awards a try! Once again, the kicking game, little chip kick through from Joint there, Brasher makes a big mess of it, it doesn't look like the Brasher did get any touch to it, and uh, it's a fair try. England 10, Australia 6, five minutes into this second half. Menz is significantly keeping out wide, looking to use that burst of pace. Fickler again, does well to get his pass away. Nice inside to Tuvi. This time to Coyne, he's got Wishart inside him. Good covering there from Paul Newlov. That was danger for England. This still is. Fickler. Oh, that's a tester for this young Oh, was he interfered with? I think he was. But it's a try nonetheless. To Mark Coyne! Brad Fiddler, well, how calm was he when he kicked that football? It was a great kick. Chris Radlinski just lost it somewhere in flight. The ball burns kindly for Australia, but there was Coyne on the spot to touch down for four points. It was a great kick from Fiddler. All square, 51 minutes gone. 
Jackson. Fawati misjudging it. Oh, and he loses it. Here's a chance for Jason Robinson. He's in at the corner. Oh, an error. An error by the wingman. Pressure football by England. They kicked into the corners. Of what they tried to bring it out. Good chase by England. Good defence. I think it was Phil Clark that came up with a crucial tackle that spilled the ball. Jason Robinson, if you gave him chances like that, he's going to he's going to take them. He'd, Pounce on the ball and managed to get over in the corner, Steve. England 16, Australia 10. England assistant coach Andy Goodway, uh, Robinson's try was a reward for application, really, wasn't it? See, Jimmy Dimmick, that's inexperience. There's no need to push that pass. Paul Newlove just said thank you very much. He's smiling before he gets to the line, Newlove. Great fend, right arm fend, pushes Brasher off, still smiling. Four pointer. The England uh, coaching uh, party on their feet. John Joyner, the assistant from Catterford, Phil Larder. At last, a smile on his face. It's England 20, Australia 10. I mentioned early on, uh, Steve, that only five of these players had actually played at Wembley. And what I was interested in, yesterday afternoon when players normally uh, visit, Australia didn't come. No, they didn't. They chose not to come. Terry Hill's made a big break down the outside here. Terry Hill, he's got to space for cracking tackle by young uh, Radlinski. That was a try-saver. And another one on Hopawati. The England cover flooding back, but still Australia. Coming in here to Dimmer. Dimmer puts the ball out. It's back to me. He's going over. Once again, support play. Australia are not out yet. And it's that man, Menzies, try scorer supreme, puts hope again in those Australian fans. Ball comes out, maybe a little bit fortunate. When the pass from Dimmick here comes off an Australian hand. But Menzies there on the spot again to get his second try of the game. Trying into injury time now. English supporters keeping their fingers crossed, Australians urging them on, just four points the difference. A couple of minutes into injury time, we have had uh, some stoppages of course. England will now be looking to put some tackles in. And there is the Hooter, the opening World Cup match is over and England are the winners. This victory will give them confidence, it will boost their morale as they enter this, what will be a tough three-week World Cup tournament. Sean Edwards, the England captain, that was a very satisfying and in the end a very dramatic victory, wasn't it? It was dramatic, um, we didn't play to the best of our ability. Uh, I think we'll have to improve to win the final. <laughs> The World Cup moved north, no Diana Ross here. The pre-match entertainment a little more challenging. Fiji adding exuberance to the tournament. South Africa, the unknown quantity. The emerging nations of rugby league. Good crowd assembling here at Turkuga Park. Many hundreds waiting to, uh, to come in to look at these two teams. Many of these uh, Fijians, again, recent uh, converts from uh, from Union, many playing with local clubs like the Nadi uh, Dragons, but others playing with Australian clubs. And a good charge there by Kauni Balu, driving towards the line, put down, good defence. One of the local players with the Eagles club there in Fiji. Fiji moving it out wide now, good pass on the outside there. Just five metres from the uh, from the line. Rather stray pass picked up by Sofatambua. Oh, he gets away there on the outside. Cutting inside. Looks like uh, Nandrew Kuhn. Still the pressure on the batties. Ballot again. The Rhinos charging near, getting ever closer. Looking for the first try. Alkema, little grubber kick. Comes off. 
He was offside. offside. Come up. Yeah, he's in front. Two more points <laughs> from Van Vyke. Edging nearer are the Rhinos. Half time in Keithley. In Yorkshire, time for a cup of tea. Elsewhere, time for a warrior to make his point. The universal language of sport. The point being, please replace your divots. The other Fijians turning on the power in the second half, piling up their points. Tremendous run there. Tremendous run by Elise Tonga. Number two. Every time he runs, he leaves South Africans lying on the floor. And here they are coming through now. Oh, striding away. Dekumi Tonga going for the line. He's in at the corner. Wonderful effort straight from their own line. They're so fast. They are so strong, these, these Fijians. They've certainly given the crowd their money's worth here. Gerald Williams can't uh, quite uh, make it. Jaco Alberts, one who probably does deserve a try. But there is the Hooter. A superb exhibition from the uh, Fijians. They were something of uh, unknowns. They were something of outsiders in uh, this tournament. They've certainly shown everyone, uh, Steve, in Group 1, that England and Australia, it's no easy route to the semi-finals. A record crowd for Rugby League at Gateshead. A rare day for Paul Harrigan, captaining Australia for the first time, despite a fracture of his cheek. In the crowd, scouts from the other code, Sir John Hall and Rob Andrew, perhaps trying to tempt a few to go north to Newcastle. Andrew Johns moving it well with brother Matthew. Oh, and that's superb, down the, the far side there, Danny Moore. And it's Hopawati racing in for the second try. A try. <laughs> well, he's not uh, too hurt. It's a little bit of a hurdling practice. And again, those spin passes moving out. Oh, and it's Matthew Johns this time. Racing in. Again, looking for support. He finds it. Oh, and striding through his Aaron Raper. Looking for the move. Set to move from the coming. Robbie O'Davis. Oh. Sweeping in, blistering pace. Johns. Johns again. Oh, and it's that. And McGregor striding through. Straight past. He's got support with him. Jim Dimmock going all the way. Johnson again there. But it's a try. The tap penalty. But Australia's defence is usually sound around the uh, around the Just look how close the difference there on the Australian line. How close the defenders are to the acting half-back position. Two or three either side. No way through. South Africa have to push it wide. Oh, he, he was almost over. It's going. Oh yes! He's over at the corner. Gideon Watts. Well, he has a black eye. He has a cut head. But there's one thing, he has a try. Gideon Watts, the first try of the tournament for South Africa. And the fans are delighted by that. That was a beautiful pass sir, from Jones. Flicked inside by Ade. Oh, and picked out of nowhere by Moore. That was fingertip passing. That uh, score, taking uh, Australia way past their previous best. And Andrew Johns equals the world record of 11 goals. That's the man of the night, Andrew Johns, and a record score for Australia. 16 tries and 11 goals. In the first test, and uh, all through the day I was a bit nervous and apprehensive, but... Uh... You know, it's good, you know, a lot playing alongside my brother helped me out a lot. And, uh, you know, to South Africa's credit, they're a building, you know, football nation. And, uh, you know, they, they never gave all night, so it's a credit to them. And there's no reason why they can't be a, 
you know, a competitive team in five or six years. England and Fiji at Wigan, 26,000 at Central Park, and the kickoff delayed to allow the crowd to pack into the ground. Sean Edwards on the bench for England, rumours of an injured knee. Edwards just a spectator at what seemed like a pretty end-to-end -end game. Smith, short pass to Farrell. Oh, he's got Newland on the side. Oh, he shrugs off the ball. Goal! Ratlinski looks for confirmation from the in-goal judge, and he gets the first try. Bobby Goulding, long, high kick, it's intended for Radlinski. Radlinski picks it up, back inside to Jason Robinson. Oh, and that is absolute class. Switch to Tony Smith, good sidestep from the Kazan Milan. Jason Robinson saw that there was no way through, pushed it out wide here. Bobby Goulding, Paul Newland going for that line. He's got support here, he's got John Bentley, and John Bentley, he's in for the try at the corner. Paul Broadbent going through, Paul Broadbent going for the line himself, oh that's a tremendous run, tremendous run. No way through. He's, he's determined to have a go at a try. Goulding again tries to repeat the, the trick of the first one. Oh, Jason Robinson! He's in there at the corner. Well, the delight on Robinson's face. England have pulled the trick once and they pulled the trick again. Bobby Goulding. Oh, Horton fairly steaming through here. There's the pace of that lad. Oh, wonderful try for Simon Horton. What a day for the teenagers. Good run by Smith. In there for a try. Steve McCurry drives at the heart of defence. Goulding puts Newlove away. Good try for Paul Newlove. The pass was perfection. Rugby League's not an easy game no matter who you play. 46-0. We were just happy with their score line more than anything. We stood, we stood strong in defence and they're a very good attacking side. to keep the ball alive and we stood really strong and didn't let them score any points and that's the most pleasing part about tonight. The 13 now for the semi-final has not been finalised. But uh, everybody in the squad now has had a start and uh, I, I learned quite a few things about certain players tonight. The McAlpine Stadium, sporting jewel of Huddersfield. And the reigning champions, Australia, looking for safe passage through to the semi-final at the expense of Fiji. To the wide Fittler. But again, Fittler's pass not reaching the defender and a Fijian hand to it. Well, good mistakes there from Brad Fittler, Steve. Yeah, they're moving up very quick on him, the Fijian. But it's here, Tim Brash in the line. Tooby out to winger number two there. Dallas, he's got outside his opposite number. Brett Dallas picks up the first try of the game. So, Australia in Fiji 22. Dean Pay, number eight. Tooby at seven. Looking for an opening, Tooby. Unloads to six, Fittler, looks like gaps open here for Steve Benzies, he's in, Steve Benzies has come up with the third try of the game. With the Fijian captain leading the Langalangi, Lee, uh, you've got the crowd on your side again, but you're going to need a bit more than that, I would think, aren't you? Of course, uh, they're a good side, they're a well-drilled side, uh, we just have to uh, hang on to the ball and probably have come up with some points. Fiji got a bit of flair, which they could, could show us, haven't they? You will see a lot more in the second half. Fiji, unfortunately, not able to reveal much more in the second half. The traffic all one way. Australia's. Go, 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 go. 
So, Tuvi on the 22 to Fittler. Dummies inside, drops it inside eventually. Oh, splendid combination there to Gary Larson. That was a set ploy. Graham Murray was telling me that uh, the Fijians, they pray before a match, they pray after a match, and they're praying there that uh, to thank God that nobody's been seriously, seriously injured, and that's all a part of their sport. They're just true sportsmen. The last match in Group 1 of Headingley, Leeds, England and South Africa. England already through to the semis, and now it was just a question of playing for places, selection for the big games to come. Golding, Powell, good slip to Phil Clark, Phil Clark, he's got to Pitney himself, and Nick Pitney scores the first try. England now in full flow, the slip to Chris Joint, back to Clark, to Andy Platt. Again, good tackle there from Gideon Watts. Goulding putting the, the kick through. And the chase for a fire, but uh, well read by Coombe. I think, uh, in a way, Joe, you know, there's perhaps possibly been too much talk in the press about, uh, you know, South Africa's defeats, 52-6 by Fiji, 86-6 by uh, Australia. And perhaps there was a complacency in this England side. I think the coaching staff of England have tried to cancel that out this week, saying that they shouldn't be complacent. They are all playing for World Cup semi-final spots. Oh, and there is one man playing for the semi-final spot, Simon Horton. And somehow I think he's certain to be in the 17. Goulding running across the face of the post. Goulding going himself, cuts inside. Clever play from Goulding. Radlinski in at the corner there. Paul Cook looking to squeeze in, but no, just look at the cover from South Africa there. Three men across, and the prop forward was across at the corner there. Gideon Watts. Well, I think when they're giving medals out for Hart, uh, Joe, these two South African props, Watts and Boyson, they must be first in the queue. But it's England on the attack. Powell changes direction. He gets it to 17, Sampson, and in he goes. Powell, that's a good pass to Barry John Martin now then. Mather, he's got the length of the field to go. He's six foot five, he's got Martin a fire with him. A fire going for the corner, but Cumbie gets him. On the fifth tackle. Now then, will they put a high ball up in the air? Will they go for it? They do. Surely a last chance. Van Vyke puts it up. Radlinski's underneath it. Oh, he takes it perfectly. And he comes racing down the middle. Tremendous uh, play by Radlinski. But it's all over. England have won. 46 points to nil. Yes, and uh, the South Africans taking uh, the applause as... Uh, as well that they might. They've worked hard in all the, of the three uh, matches. And I'm sure by the time the next one comes around, we'll hear a lot more of South Africa. I try to, to get out of this, this uh, World Cup with, with honour. And I think the guys succeeded very well in that. We weren't going to let them get a big score. And I think all that, was on, all that we had to, to go for here was our honour. And I think we came out very well. Honour for South Africa but no points. England top of Group 1, unbeaten in three games. Australia, as expected, the other team through. Group 2, the Pacific Island group, one to qualify from New Zealand, Papua New Guinea and Tonga. <laughs> New Zealand group 2 favourites. And Tonga, supposedly depleted by losing Jim Dimmock and John Hopuate to Australia. <laughs> it was to be a World Cup classic. Driving hard, Marcelo. Good position there. It's Tongan side. 
see the, the white line of, of the New Zealand try earlier there. Good drive here, Lee Hansen, great ball! Lee Hansen into Willie Waldrum for the first get try of the game. New Zealand down the blind side. Ruben Wicky stepping, driving hard, tackled by Mann. This player Mann seems to be everywhere today. Keeney, that one on the inside, tackled by Hansen. Eventually. Sid. Sid Hero down the blind side. Oh, a sloppy pass yet again. Which could result in a try, if not, I'm not mistaken. He's given the try. Number two for New Zealand. Sean Hoppy has picked up a try to nothing. So now, Stacey Jones teasing this defence, bringing Pongi on the angle run. Ball inside, Stephen Keeney running well. Matthew Ridge in support, Henry Palmer is here, Stacey Jones, out inside there, Tony Kemp try on the outside. The Tongan defence finally cut to shreds by this New Zealand attacking machine. Yeah, they're keeping the ball alive now, New Zealand. They want another try just before the half-time interval. Henry Paul in, out, stepping inside there. Quintin Pongia looking to unload. Driving hard, so it's New Zealand. Looking to get some more points on the board. Fifth tackle, down the blind side. Tony Kemp, short pass there. Richie Blackmore, try for New Zealand. Fifth tackle, Tony Iroh, probing the defence. Inside to Barney, inside there to number four, Rupert Wiki. He's given a try. He's given double movement. Way, man, dummy inside, pass outside. They're still retain it. Little, little right times of the passing, but they've still got it. Six tackle. Little chip over the top. It's bumble at number three. It's a try. A try there by Tofa. And there we see Namu. Numerous stitches in that uh, cheekbone injury. Number five by Corsa. Bringing inside. Guten Tag, driving hard. One or two swinging arms here and there, but nothing to the displeasure of... Uh, and it's a kick through here for Vikos. He may have scored! He may have scored from that super kick through in the corner. Third try for Tonga from a kick from Mann in the middle of the field to push Tonga out to 14-12. Number two, Sean Hoppy, giving his forwards a break, driving away. 61 minutes gone, Joe. Yeah, that was good work from, from Hoppy there to uh, help relieve the forwards' pressure and just take the ball away, made good yards out of his own half. And his substitute, Fino, he's picking up his loose pass. Fino in the corner! Fino for Tonga! We may have a major upset on our hands here with Tonga. The underdogs from the South Pacific taking a mighty New Zealand and currently leading 20 points to 12. Kick into the corner there from number seven, Wolfgram. Collected there by Barnett. And look at that tackling from Tufa, who pushed him into his, his in-goal area. A dreadful mistake, and that'll result in a penalty to Tonga in front of the post. They must surely now take the two points. No problem. So New Zealand, can they get some more points on it? Stacey Jones, across the field, Namu. Kearney stepping off his left foot. Namu again, into number two. Sean Hoppy, probing, weaving on the 22 metres. New Zealand chasing the game here now. Stacey Jones up the blind side, throws one out the back door, collected by Namu. Henry Paul in possession. Pass to Matthew Ridge on the break. Matthew Ridge. He took the scene. He scored. Infield. Namu. Jones. Henry Paul in the thick of action. Basketball pass. Sean Hopper. 
We're now inside the last minute of normal time. Kevin Aro weaving his magic. Number three, Richie Blackmore, push it off. Richie Blackmore is in for a try. Richie Blackmore has pulled some points back for New Zealand here in the corner. We're in the last minute of normal time. The pressure kicker supreme has kicked the conversion to make it 24 all. This Sheila must go for the one point here. Well, they're going for the try on the left. Kevin Iroh, five yards from the line, five yards from the line. What can New Zealand do? Tongan defence. Henry Paul, the, mag the magician, he's been there within drop goals, striking range. I would guess Ridge saw one of those plays. Matthew Ridge forced him off, plenty of time. He scored the drop goal. Matthew Ridge has saved the game for New Zealand. All the Tottenham players, Terry, have done themselves and their country proud tonight. They've played some excellent football. They've come here new to the world stage and played excellent. Yeah, you, you certainly made some friends here tonight. Well, yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, I guess the people back home in the Kingdom of Tonga and uh, the people that are over here with us are extremely proud of the team performance. It was a good team performance, right from the uh, coaching staff uh, to the people of St. Helens, uh, from Mike McLennan's group who have helped us. Uh, so, you know, once again, a big thank you to all those people. Papua New Guinea, the only country in the World Cup where rugby league is the national sport. Tonga with a chance to bounce straight back after that cliffhanger defeat. And how? No hangover here apparently. Tonga 20 0 in the lead, but then in the second half, the start of a headache. Here we go from Papua New Guinea, get some points on the board, bring this game alive once again. Number nine down the blind side, the LS Pio. A couple of times and he's teasing this defence, Joe. Well, on two occasions now, they've gone for the line on the short side, but no support there. It's Karora who took the ball down the right-hand side. Now they look to open it out wide. Lamb, half-back half -back partnership, bringing the centres into play. Good strong run here from number four. Number four, O'Connor, inside to Lamb! Just what Papua New Guinea needed. Adrian Lamb, the captain, has brought his side back into the game with a splendid try. Little switch move, number eight, have I? Tried to unload, lost it, then regained it. The referees kept with play, no mistake there. Lamb, across the field there. Papua New Guinea, gap a while, mile wide there. Number one there, Buko coming in. Gaps appearing in this Tonga defence, can Papua New Guinea score? Number six there, Gene. No. Fifth tackle coming up. Can Papua New Guinea get some more points? Number nine there. Payo, he's scored. Payo scored underneath the post. Elias Payo making it Tonga 20, Papua New Guinea 10. What can Papua New Guinea do to get some more points on the board? Number 12, Nan Nanda Yer driving onto this near side. Tackled by Tonga. Number 16 there on for. Uh, PNG. Bye, Marcus Bye. And a very lively run to accompany his first touch of the ball. Going across field here. We're straightening up here by David Buko on the inside. He's in for a try. David Buko shot through the Tonga defence for a splendid try. Inside there, Tofa running hard. Tonga about to break back into gear as it were. Number 15, Liku, run hard all this half. Liku, twisting, turning. He may have scored there. He has. Liku has come up with a try by Tonga for Tonga. The ideal way to respond to the Papua New Guinea onslaught. Five yards from the line. Lamb at first receiver. Bringing his runners, switched back down the blind side. Number 12 there, Yer. Inside there to 15. The substitute forward. Good play there, enterprising play, trying to increase the score. Number five there, Karoru in the middle, yard from the line. 
Are we going to see Payo trying to his luck once more? No, cross to Lamb. Little grubber kick through. He had a try by number six, uh, Stanley Jean, linking well with his half back partner Lamb. Dwayne Mann, that's in half. Wolfgram. Switch back inside. George Mann steps. Tackled by the first defender but releases. Dwayne Mann. Bomb into the sky. Misfield there. Finally coming up. Number two. Tofa. Has he scored? Has the referee given it? He has. He's a fullback, Boku, that let it bounce off his shoulder. The ball comes out to Amon. And there the number two for Tonga. Tofu goes over the line to score the try that could seal this game for Tonga. Six points would equalise this game and conclude things. Adrian Lamb on the inside, inside there, to substitute! Number 15 for Papua New Guinea, Solbat has come up with the try underneath the post. So, and Payo level the scores in injury time for Papua New Guinea. They've scored in the second minute of injury time to thrill this crowd of over 5,000 here at Humberside to bring the scoreline back to 28 points all. New Zealand were at St Helens on Friday. Yeah, that's another task. We played New Zealand twice last year and uh, we're unsuccessful both times, but uh, you know, um, this is the World Cup and there's, uh, there's a lot of upsets to go, so hopefully it'll be one then too. New Zealand at Nosley Road, St Helens against Papua New Guinea. The Kiwis at the centre of a drug scandal, losing hooker Sid Eru, who took a swig of the wrong cough medicine. In the place of the suspended Eru for the Group 2 decider, in came ex-captain Gary Freeman at hooker. Henry Paul, twisting, dodging, gets a good pass out there to Williams. No way through. Looking for the high kick from Freeman. It's a good one. It's testing Buko. Oh, Matthew Ridge has caught it. And Matthew Ridge has scored. Oh, superb steal there from the Kiwi fullback and captain. New Zealand just inside the. Kummel's 20 meter area. But good, solid uh, defense there from the Kummel, swinging it wide now. Across to Stacey Jones. Jones, good pass over there. Oh, and it's Blackmore racing in. Good play in midfield. Good play in midfield. And he certainly drives with these uh, forwards. And it's Gary Freeman again. In a little, uh, a little bother. I think Gary Freeman using the knee initially and then using uh, the elbow. <laughs> Straight between the uprights, the flanks are raised, and Papua with points on the board. With Kevin Iro in now, the two Iro brothers thrown into the fray. Obviously, yeah. Oh, he just can't get through. Blistering pace, this uh, Kummel skipper. Payo driving forward. Has he got that ball down? Only the referee knows, and only the referee gives the decision. He says he hasn't got the ball down. Back to Lamb again. Oh, beautiful play. He's got real pace, this lad. Oh! He's got one to beat. He cuts inside. Tremendous play from John Ockle. That really tested the Kiwis out there. But still the New Zealand line holds. Still Papua New Guinea can't get over it. And still New Zealand look to be heading for a semi-final place. Lamb. That's a good pass from the substitute there. It's 
all about. Tremendous handling skills here now. Oh, it's Marcus Barry. He's going for the line. Oh, and he's in. Wonderful effort. And at last, the Cubbles are over there. Mr Cummings getting them the full 10 metres back. Jones again. Paul, little switch round. Oh, he sends the big uh, centre. Blackmore racing through. And it's a try for Sean Hoppy. The Papua New Guineans there just having a team photograph. Adrian Lamb in the middle. They'll treasure this uh, photograph in years to come. New Zealand in the end clear winners of Group 2 and through to face Australia in the semi-final. Group 3, Wales like England enjoying playing on home soil, France and Western Samoa. huddling at Ninian Park Cardiff in front of another record crowd for Rugby League, the reigning champions of Europe in their own backyard to take on France. But it's still Wales in possession. Jonathan Davis back again. Here's one man who doesn't need any weight lifting. Oh, Paul Moriarty just couldn't get up there. Uh, uh, but he's really causing problems. On the fifth tackle, back to Davis. Good ball to Harris. Alan Bateman's got Sullivan. He's in at the corner. Oh, that was crisp passing. That was slick by the Welsh shirt three quarter line. To Valero. Picked up superbly by Alan Bateman. Ever alert there. Davis going out in half back position. Gets a good pass to Harris. To Sullivan. Sullivan going for the win, but he said, oh, beautiful change of pace. Superb change of pace by the St. Helens wingman. Back to Harris. Harris coming more and more now. More adventures from that fullback position. To Martin Hall. Hall finds Ellis again. Good long pass to Deverer. Davis is out wide. Davis, the ball to Anthony Sullivan. And Sullivan's in for his hat trick. Wonderful rugby again. Is uh, Cunningham and uh, Roland Phillips, the big uh, Workington Town prop. Good pass from uh, Torreda and Farge. Jonathan Davies hurt him. Oh, first. good run by Shepard, and he's got support. And it's a good try to Torre. That was good running. We stressed that these uh, Frenchmen have the class, the footballing ability. Wales with a pair of problems, an injury to Jonathan Davis, the standoff injured, making this tackle, and there was a debate over the number of replacements Wales had used. It all ended happily enough, no penalty for overdoing the substitutes, and Davis fit for the next match, and further tries from Yestin Harris and John Devereux, seeing them safely through. Western Samoa, the major threat to the established order in rugby. The Islanders' natural aggression refined by the coaching skills of Graham Lowe. France were directly in the way, and from a bit further away, the watching Welsh in red. Number nine, Touré, acting halfback. Touré, switch down the blind. Number 11 there, Boudadvan. Touré. Another switch down the blind to number 10. Bit of a gap here on the blind side for the French player. Into number four, and it's Chamoran, who's picked up the first try of the game. Making it France four, Western Samoa nil. On the blind side there, poaching the hooker. He's going very close, poaching. That was a nice little half break. Tackled well there by Cavaste, but it's number 11. In for the try, Tony Tatupo, who just scored. Poaching, acting half. Bit of a complicated switch move. Few passes in that move, and it's Matuta coming up the middle after three or four switches of play. Intricate move there from Western Samoa. The Samoan Demolition Squad.
can't swept aside. Food for thought for the men in red. I'm glad that we finished what we've uh, come here to do in our first game. And whilst obviously it will be the big game that uh, we're looking forward to, the fact that they beat France so com comfortably the, uh, the other night, it sets it up for a great finale for, for the Pools game. The Group 3 showdown, another sellout this time at the Vetchfield Swansea, facing down the Samoans, the side with the habit of coming to Wales and knocking them out of Rugby World Cups. Ellis to Davis. Wide pass out here to Young, Yeslin Harris, only 19 years old. Twigger Marlow read that very good. He came out quick in, quick in a defensive one and cut Harris off. So Davis stepping through the middle. Deborah, fits right onto the 22 metres line. Oh, teasing the defence. Ellis looking to go wide. Good wide pass from Ellis. Bringing in Quinnell. Strains up. Scott Quinnell up to the fullback. Can he get over? No, oh, he's held there. Just on the line. Great tackle there from number two. He's sent to you a part of the sin, Ben. He's judging that he's pulled Quinnell over after told him to play the ball. And Harris. Harris has gone through for a splendid try. Six minutes into this game. Grimacing with pain. Uh, number 11. Satupu. Crosby. Brings him Matautia straightening up, Vila Matautia, he stepped through for a great response. Vila Matautia has scored the first try for Western Samoa. So uh, on the possession, Wales, I mean, practically two to one there in the ratio terms, but pretty much even, Stephen, in the territory, Steve. Yeah, it's been uh, even that area, but uh, possession is uh, in the world's favour by a long way. So a great kick here by Jonathan Davis for Anthony Sullivan. He dribbles the ball up and he scores! Anthony Sullivan! Wales leading 12-8, some 30 minutes. Big hit there from Deborah. That must have hurt. Moriata comes strong. And uh, Twigamala tackling upstairs again. We'll have to uh, watch his mark with uh, this referee Smith. Ball acting half back. Brings in Moriata. Good tackle there from Sam Parapa. David Young this time up to halfway. Big hit by Vergana. We've seen some awesome tackling today. And uh, another pile driver there from Vergana. Davis out wide. Scott Quinnell. Cross field. Moriarty slips on the greasy surface. So on the fifth tackle now. Davis back, trying a drop goal. Trying the drop goal. Jonathan Davis. Successful. Good, good possession play here from Samoa. Perilini in the action. Good drive. Line side move. Ropati goes down the blind. Looking for Togemala on the burst. And he takes some stopping. Does this powerful centre to Togemala? So Panapa, what can he weave some magic? Sam Panapa to Willie Porching there. Almost over. Been dragged over the line on his back. Bit of magic from Sam Panapa and the supporting coaching, but no try. And it's Wales still with possession. Phillips unloads. Ellis to Davis. Into the last 10 minutes almost. Out to Adrian Hadley. Outside his opposite number. But no, it's tremendous tackle by Mark Elia. Four metres from the line. Martin All acting half back. Looks one way, comes back. Richie Ayres up the middle, driving hard, Richie Ayres on his hands and knees, trying to scramble, but the Samoans hold out. David Young now, he, he's having a go, same area. Need a little bit of inventive play here, perhaps Wales. Gaps must be out wide, because the defence is very tight. It's Ellis looking down, back down the play the ball area. They may up, they may up for a drop goal, perhaps, but Davis injured. Let's see. 
Back to Harris, does he try one? He does. And Yestin Harris, the fullback. Lethargic attack here. But uh, there's some voice throwing the ball around and it's come up with Roland Phillips. Roland Phillips inside to Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris has seen matters here at the bench. Another mistake by Western Samoa. So, Wales secured this game and will now go forward to play England in the semi. And there goes the final hooter. Roland Phillips, the Welsh players rejoice. They've won through to the semi finals in front of a fanatical crowd here at the Vetch Field. I think the boys just got too over anxious in the first, you know, first half of the game and uh, gave away silly penalties and silly mistakes that. Uh, to, you know, to Wales credit, uh, make the most of it, they, they took full advantage of them. A disconsolate Graham Law, but a massive crowd here rejoice with their players. Arms raised, applaud their heroes. Splendid display from this Welsh team. Wales on top of gruelling Group 3 are now preparing to leave home to face England in the semi final. So the World Cup competition down to the last four. No great surprises in the four that went through. But uh, Ray French, who impressed you most of all among those that went out? Well, I think the Pacific Islanders, they, they brought a sense of adventure and uh, excitement. They love to run, they love to handle a the ball, they can tackle. They're naturals for rugby league and we must invest in them, Steve. We, we must give them a future. And Joe Lydon, in terms of Western Samoa, enormous physical potential, powerful side, aren't they? Yeah, again, both, both Western Samoa and Tonga really are. Um, epitomised uh, what the new era of rugby league is all about and they played an un uncompromising exciting band of football and uh, Tonga really was so unlucky not to uh, progress to the semi-finals it would have been a major shock for the tournament but they could have so easily picked New Zealand in that semi-final berth. Absolutely some thoughts that South Africa didn't really belong at this level Ray but um, what did they get out of the competition do you think? Well, they were. They are the new boys. Um, they showed a lot of pride and a lot of uh, commitment. You know, there was a feeling there of possible humiliation in that last match against England, but no. They stood up, they were a proud uh, race, as we know South Africans are, and they threw everything into that uh, match. They'll come, and I think by the time the next uh, World Cup comes around, they'll be a force. So exciting group games, but on to the semi-finals. England against Wales, first of all. It took place at Old Trafford. And after the Welsh form against France and Western Samoa, there was no reason for complacency in the England camp. And it was a tough afternoon. Here are the highlights. <laughs> 10,000 fans from Wales trekked north to give Wales a tremendous welcome. Pressure now on the England line. Davis again to put the kick. Ooh, it's, ah, it's almost out of the stadium. Well taken by Farrell. Accepted the responsibility. And Robinson trying to cut away again. He weaves, he dances, he dodges. He beats man after man. Tremendous run out of defence there by Jason Robinson. The crowd. Getting behind England, Carl Harrison can't get the ball away, he does, to Pinkney, good di display here. Yes, England had a good set of six on the previous tackles, but then a bad kick failed to relieve the pressure. This time they've managed to get it to Wales half, and I think we'll see the kick now. Farrell, on this near side, he's got Clark, can he get the ball across? Picked up by Farrell again, back inside to Newlove, Newlove, that's it for the corner! She's over there. Superb effort from England. But it's Wales replying. Paul Moriarty. Offside. 
Tony Smith in an offside position. And after weathering the storm on the line, two points here from uh, Davis would lift morale. Davis then looking for his second goal, and he finds it. Radlinski. He's got the height, but not the, uh, the direction. Well, he picks it up again. Still on the fifth tackle, an attempted drop by Goulding. And it is there. Bobby Goulding, quick drop goal. And that edges England out further. Oh, good pass there from Quinn Now that where's he got a chance out wide here? And at Bayman, he's got it to Sullivan. Oh, now that wing there, Sullivan's still going, but it's in touch. No try for Devonard. Not an awful lot of penalties uh, conceded in this match. The game has uh, been quite free flowing. Farrell. Good switch inside to Tony Smith. Oh, and Danny Spence is going over. Superb effort. That's what you call second row support play. More trouble for Wales. Second row Paul Moriarty coming in with the punch on Andy Farrell. Ten minutes in the Simbin. And in Moriarty's absence. Jackson once again going from the acting half back position. England really cutting uh, Wales here around the rocks. The short pass to Goulding. He's got Pickney. On the fifth tackle, Bobby Goulding stamps a kick to the corner. But a fire, and a fire puts it down. Griffiths and uh, Mike Nicholas there wondering, you know, he's checking his watch, just what they can do to break down this English defence. This England uh, pack troubling at Wales. Bobby Goulding again putting that kick there for a fire. The fire's there! Oh, the fire's got that ball again! I think he bounces this one down. Let's see, he does. That is not a try. Mr. Hawley had nothing to say. And it counts as four points. No way forward. Back to Ellis again. Davis in midfield with a little space. Got Ellis with him. Roland Phillips. Can he get the ball away? No, he can't. Good tackle from Roland Phillips. Plays the ball himself. Phillips got it. Oh yes! And at last, at last, Wales strike back. Number 16. Roland gives the Welsh support something to shout about. Cop Gibbs can't escape the clutches of Newlow, but still Wales come forward. Paul Moriarty charging to that line. Gets it away to Ellis. Ellis. Oh, he's got it from Ellis. He's got it the line. He's just held up there. A foot short. But it's still Wales. Pressing. Skerritt drives in. But that was good cover by you. By England. Well, Sean Edwards looks bored by it all, but I'm pretty certain he's not. And uh, Mr. Ward just uh, sending uh, Dean Sampson off, I think, to the uh, to the blood bin. <laughs> Carl Harrison coming back on. Bateman, Sullivan. Superb effort from Anthony Sullivan. But there's Redlinski. Cassidy. Penalties uh, conceded there, uh, 13. That's not a lot for a game of this uh, intensity. Apart from those uh, couple of high tackles. Not too many indiscretions. Oh, beautiful ball to Clark and he's over. Took everyone by surprise. Phil Clark racing on to that pass, surely to clinch England's place in that final at Wembley. Bobby Goulding, 
looking for his first goal of the afternoon, and I think he finds it, he does. So, a further two points from man of the match, Bobby Gooley. And there is the hooter, a gallant effort from Wales here at, at Old Trafford. But England, rightly I think the winners, 25 points to 10, smiles on the England faces. And it's been a splendid game and the emotions running high now, but uh, it's been a fantastic game and England deserve to go through on, on merit. Well, Jonathan Davis, that was no pushover, an amazing game in the second half. It's been a pleasure playing with the boys, it's my last game in international football and uh, it'd be nice to win, but, uh, you know, the best I'd win in the day and I hope they do well next week. Well, you know, the game's given me everything uh, and I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Couldn't have wished to play in a... Uh, with a better bunch of lads against a great bunch of a bit bunch of lads, the English boys, and uh, it's just sad that it's got to come to an end. But uh, there we are. Well, obviously, after absorbing that disappointment, things have moved quickly for Jonathan Davis. His return to rugby union was confirmed this week, and in barely 50 minutes' time, he plays his first game for Cardiff at home to Aberavon in front of a capacity crowd and also the live cameras of BBC Wales, who will screen the match straight after this programme. The rest of the country will see highlights in rugby special. But Joe Lydon, what has uh, Jonathan proved in rugby league after the last few seasons? He's proved an awful lot. Initially when he arrived, he had his critics saying that he would never be big enough for the game of rugby league. Um, Jonathan worked very, very hard and let his skills and talents uh, answer those criticisms. He, um, I'm sure everybody that's watched him play and played against him alongside him has has admired the way he's played the game. Um, he's given an awful lot, but I think he'll admit himself that he's learned an awful lot. And although I am sorry to see him go back to, uh, to rugby union, uh, you know, I've got to hold my hands up and say he's been a great ambassador and played really well, and, and I just wish him all the luck that he deserves. He's got a few years left in him, hasn't he? I think so, just a couple. <laughs> and rugby league in Wales, after the excitement of the last month, Ray, that's received a real boost. Oh, I think so. I mean, Wales and Welshmen have been around since the turn of the century in, uh, in rugby league. And we've had many false dawns with clubs in the past, but I do think the time is ripe for a club. It must be a top club, Steve. We can't have any half measures. We may have to repatriate players. We may have to compensate clubs, but we must put the top players down there. And I believe if we do, I think the Welsh public will support rugby league. OK, big boost for the game in Wales, but England threw with a bit of relief through to the final to face the winners of Australia and New Zealand who are playing the following day. Now, New Zealand have always threatened to break through at the highest level and Australia were only too conscious of their power and potential as they lined up for the second semi-final at Huddersfield. An occasion of enormous tension was to follow. Australia, New Zealand, the second semi-final. From Wales v England on a Saturday to a Sunday from near neighbours from the south, Australia and New Zealand, the Kangaroos with the advantage of having beaten the Kiwis 3-0 in a recent test series. It didn't start like a classic. Johns with the pass, oh Menzies trying to break out wide there, I think we'll see this uh, boy Menzies racing out wide, off these passes by Johns, Fittler, inside to Brasher, Brasher going for the line. Four points, and it was the passing in midfield that once again caught New Zealand out wide. Tuvi didn't relish the uh, attention there. Larson gets that ball away to Coyne. Back again to Caro. Caro. Oh, flicked inside. That was an element of luck, I think. But Menzies was hanging around out there. There was an element of luck about it. But last players make their own luck. <laughs> Problems there. Oh, well, Stephen Kearney, I, I think he was objecting to the ball uh, attempt at uh, ripping out there by, uh, by Fickler. Certainly the Australian was interfering. Matthew Ridge just uh, composing himself. Oh, and he gets the two points. So, the New Zealand skipper bringing New Zealand back into this game. 
This is the danger time now for New Zealand. Closing minutes of this half. Australia looking for another try. Out to Dean Pay. Good release from Pay. Johns again to Menzies. Tuvi plays it down the same uh, side. Coin dummies his way through. We said this was the danger period. This is when Australia liked to strike. Australia easing their way out of that 20 minute area. Oh, good passing there again. And it's Menzies on hand. Now then, just look at this boy go. It's a race to the line. Matthew Ridge is going for him. Hoppy is there, but he's going to go over. Sensational try from this boy. Steve Bobby Fulton using his, uh, his substitutes well. Mark Carroll's had a good hour. Kevin Iro trying to burst through, looking for support. Kearney, that's a good pass to Tony Iro. He's got Henry Paul there. Oh, a beautiful pass from Henry Paul. Kearney inside to Pongia. Back again to Tony Iro. This is good stuff from New Zealand. Oh, just a support player shot. But the Kiwis on the attack. Gene Namu, superb long pass to Airo. Airo cuts inside. Gets it to Blackmore. Oh, again, a lovely pass, one-handed. And Bernard is in. That was style, that was class, that was good handling. From the, the Kangaroos. And at last they break the cover down. Namu. Pongia. Offside. Another six tackles against uh, Australia. Quick tap again. Oscar Sini driving in. Oh, tremendous effort there. Almost took the kangaroos by surprise. Jones. Well... Kearney coming along at the face of the post early. We need some direct running now. Namu again. Nice switch of play. Tony Iro. Will he go himself? He's in. Tony Iro. He's in for the try. Australia beginning to turn. The Kiwis roaring back. And Tony Iro took matters into his own hands. He went for the line and he scored. Nine minutes remaining. Six points the difference. Tuvi to Johns. Matthew Ridge is underneath it. Oh, that's a tricky one. Oh, he's lost it. <laughs> They've all lost it. That was a very, very tricky kick, that. Russia lost it. New Zealand lost it. Oh, and quickly played by Henry Paul. Surely he was interfered with. And that will be a sin bin, I'm certain. Yes, he's going. Terry Hill into the sin bin. So, three minutes remaining. Australia down to 12 men. Last gaff for New Zealand now. The message has come down from Frank Endicott that when they've got the ball in the fifth tackle, they must go in the air. They must bomb the Australians. Nothing on the ground. Frank Endicott biting his lip. Kearney. Kevin Iro, he's got Blackmore alongside him. Just can't get through. Good Rebound. cover tackle. Wayne Pay. Bobby Fulton, not been in this situation for a long time. Henry Paul again gets a good pass out to Matthew Ridge. Oh, and he's going for the line. Kevin Iro's going over. Oh, a magnificent try. New Zealand have come back. The kick from the touchline from Matthew Ridge, one of the best kickers in world rugby, possibly to take New Zealand into the Halifax World Cup final. The pressure on the skipper.
No goal, no conversion. Oohs and ahs from the crowd. Half a minute remaining, locked at 20 points each. Looking for a quick play of the ball. Pongia, it goes to Ridge. Is he going to have a shot at goal? Left footed, he does. It's a huge one. Just to the left of the upright. Wonderful effort there from Matthew Ridge. There it is. All square at full time. 20 points each. Wonderful effort. But they've got a further two 10 minute periods now of extra time. I couldn't understand him. What I did tell him was it went to. That's modern technology. This ain't no technological breakdown. Oh no, this is the road to hell. Extra time. Sit in. Hard cut flash. It's almost a fresh game. Cramp. Must be exhausted. Australia have struck again. This will be a test of all 26. Fitler. And that's the try that could take Australia to the World Cup final. They've certainly shown the true metal this afternoon. Medals are quite a few seconds ago, so I was on my way home. And if uh, next week's as hard as that, I wish I was at home. Yeah, well, mate, we had a kick from the sideline that, uh, you know, I possibly should have got. And then a, uh, a drop kick that probably missed by about centimetres, but there's a coat of paint in it, but that's the way it goes. I mean, uh, full credit to Australia, they, uh, they hung on for the win. And, but, you know, I've got to give our guys a big rap. I thought uh, we stuck in there really well and we showed a lot of pride and a lot of commitment and a lot of heart. And, uh, you know, we almost came away with it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to take it, you know? If anything, Joe Lydon has been a question mark over New Zealand commitment and pride in previous seasons. That's been dispelled uh, over the course of the last month. Definitely. I mean, they have a wealth of talent to select from. I think they have a problem combining that talent. Um, and this World Cup, they didn't quite get the formula right. But if they do get that formula right, they have the potential to win any tournament in any game. And the key to the development and progress of the New Zealand game is possibly the Auckland Warriors and, and the club level, the involvement in the Winfield Cup as that's, well. That's been a massive boost for the New Zealand game. Uh, they have the profile now, they're in the Australian Winfield Cup and they compete at the top level. Um, not only does it draw the crowds in, but it also brings the juniors through and as I say, it's great for the game. Well, they came desperately close to the final, but just before reviewing that final, let's turn our attention to the competition that was running parallel to the World Cup, the Emerging Nations competition, which was underlining the international growth of rugby league. Seven teams took part, Russia, Scotland, the USA, Moldova, Morocco, but the final would be between Ireland and the Cook Islands. And it took place on a rather bad night weather-wise at Gig Lane Berry, but uh, raised certainly a fair bit of Pacific passion on show. There was. It took the Cook Islanders some time to get uh, used to the, to the very bad weather. It really did uh, pour down. But they brought, as you can see, commission com and passion to the, uh, to the game. Good handlers, good runners, uh, every one of them, from 1 to 13. They, they really enjoy running with this football team. Well, the Cook Islands would eventually win it by 22 points to six, but what have the Irish proved during the course of this competition, Ray? Well, the Irish, again, have developed tremendously over the past couple of, uh, of years. Uh, they were very brave uh, in this match. They were outclassed uh, in the end uh, by a lot of players who have played uh, regularly in the New Zealand uh, leagues. But it would be a great boost to those uh, amateur clubs that have now been set up both north and south of the border. That was the Cook Islands try that eventually sealed their victory, 22 points to six. So they lift the first trophy in this centenary World Cup. But the main event was played out just four days later. Could England achieve their second victory over Australia in the space of three weeks and reclaim the World Cup for the first time since 1972? Well, in front of a 65,000 crowd at Wembley, the Halifax Centenary Rugby League World Cup final, England taking on the holders Australia. And after the pre-match entertainment, will the status quo survive?
Cummins. That was Matt taking of the, uh, the kick-off. Australia on the attack. Desperate defence here needed now from, uh, from England. Larson cutting through. Larson. Oh, he's only got a lead over, surely. No, he's just... Uh, just held up. Australia. Again, Jones moves the ball out wide. Oh, good tackle. Excellent tackle there from uh, Paul Newland on, uh, on Terry Hill. Australia moving the ball wide again. They've got an overlap outside. Brings it back inside to Menzies and to Dimmock. Well, I think the Kangaroos would have been better advised to have continued that ball to the left. But it's Jones again with a little grubber kick. Robinson's there! Looking there for the consultation, and I'm sure Richard's got the touchdown. He has, says uh, Mr. Cummings, but there'll be a lot of controversy on that, I'm sure. England on the attack to Farrell. And uh, penalty. Andrew Jones penalised. Lying on again at the tackle. Newling then looking to add another three points. He does, but only just. Oh, and a fire going away. Now then, a fire. Can he go all the way? I think he will. Marking a fire going to the corner. Oh, he's just caught at the corner. Just caught at the corner. The crowd roar for a try, but he won't be. Another penalty, I think this time against uh, England, but it was foul play spotted. And it is another two for Australia. This is better then from England now. England moving forward. Cassidy. Switching play with Clark. Clark, oh, almost getting through. Just an ankle tap. But 15 metres from the Australian line, Bobby Goulding opening it wide to Dennis Betts, Betts to Tony Smith. He's got plenty of pace of this uh, Catherwood standoff. Newlove tries for the line himself, and Paul Newlove, he takes matters into his hands. The big, powerful Bradford Northern Centre. Well picked up by Chris Radlinski. That was a vital tackle. One tackle remaining. Oh, Australia going to the line. Intercepted by Phil Clark. Dennis Betts, time for a captain to inspire. To Tony Smith. Tony Smith. He's got to end the hole. Did he uh, trip over Brasher or did he fall over? Whatever. England want to keep the ball moving to Bobby Gooley. Gooling tries to cut through the middle, but again, good cover there from Gary Larson. England on the attack. Andy Farrell puts a little cover kick in behind Dallas. Oh, it's a teaser. Hits the touching goal. On the fifth tackle, Tuvey, danger here down this left hand side. Picks it again, trying to kick. Oh, he gets the ricochet. It's still in play on the sixth tackle. England must move out quickly. They can't let Australia keep it up. Oh, Jones going for the line. Oh, Radlinski. Is he going to give a try? I think he is. He's giving a try to Russia. And Australia go in the lead at a vital stage in this game. Good pass from Platt. Jackson, England opening up now. Betts, oh, good tackle and a good pass. Farrell, a beautiful ball out there to Clark, but that's good cover from Australia. Superb rugby from England, and Australia there, professional foul. No wonder England are annoyed at that, and that surely must be a sin being offence. Terry 
hell of a good tackle. Tony Smith. Jackson. Still Lee Jackson. Puts that kick in for Phil Clark, but it's picked up by Wishart. That's good cover again. To me again. To Brasher. Brasher finds a gap. Well, the ball was knocked down. Picked up by Wadlinski. Forced into touch. There is the hooter. England, sadly for them, is a lost cause. Menzies, Wishart, Coyne and Brasher congratulate each other. It was that Brasher try that was the killer at the end. England have pushed hard during this uh, this World Cup, but still lack the killer instinct to take the crown off these champions. We tried our best. We did what we had. We probably didn't do what we had to do on the day. But when you're talking about rugby league match, not everything comes together for you. We stuck at our task. We um, we didn't have a lot of ball at times, but we was close for a long, long time. And it's a couple of little mistakes just let them into take the game and just out of our reach towards the end. And uh, there is number six, Brad Fittler, leading the Australians up those steps for the Halifax World Cup. Yet it means so much to Australian rugby. Presented by His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward, and gratefully received by Brad Fittler. Australia, winners of the Halifax World Cup 1995. Yeah, we got better each game, and uh, you know, the boys were under pressure, you know, from at home. And... <coughs> and from over here, we didn't have much go for us over the boys. They lifted today and England played great, but you now it was quite better. Australia then, the world champions. They're proud world champions, they've deserved it. Yes, Australia world champions once again. The England players, Joe Lydon, have now had, what, eight days to reflect on the way they played at Wembley. Uh, should they be that disappointed? What should they regret most of all about that Wembley final? Far from the result. <laughs> yeah, the result, obviously, but the fact that they, they had it there, they could have won it. I mean, I, in my opinion, they were the better side throughout the competition. They had the form and they had the experience as well. And then the last hurdle just failed to grasp it. So they must be very, very disappointed. But they also should be proud in the way they played and they approached the games. Um, but it's still, it's still hard to swallow, a bitter pill to swallow. How much did you see Australia improving during the course of the competition compared to that opening match at Wembley? I think markably. Uh, Brad Fittler said at the end there, summed it up, that every game they got better, they became uh, more involved as a team, uh, the pattern developed, and they started to believe in themselves that they could go all the way and, and win it, um, which is a big issue. I mean, it's a big... To, to have that confidence, when they first arrived here, I think they, they thought they were the underdogs, which is unusual for Australia, but as the competition went on, they, they started to have that self-belief. And, uh, and in the end, it, it proved to be right. It's a great belief, Ray, among the Australians, uh, among the English players and among the Great Britain players. Is there now a sort of mental block about stringing together a run of victories against these Australians? Well, it seems to be coming that way, Steve, doesn't it? And uh, I think, um, you know, psychologically, we do have to break, uh, break that down. I don't think the players were ever too confident. I think the public were too confident and I think that that was the problem that uh, many of the players uh, faced I don't think Phil Larder was ever too confident mm. but this is the problem with the uh, with the Aussies they, they put a clamp on you they hold you and they wait and wait and wait you make a mistake and they pounce um, difficult very very difficult we've got to break them down absolutely well from Australia another great team performance as you say but what about the 13 outstanding individuals of this World Cup competition or at least one man's opinion here's Ray French's choice of the dream team Justin Harris from Wales a talented teenager yet like the best of players able to ride a tackle England's Jason Robinson here, always hungry for tries. Just notice how low he goes in at the corner. Blackmore, New Zealand's major strike force, a power in the middle for the Kiwis. And Paul Newell of my uh, other centre, not just a powerful player, but pace, deceptive here. And Anthony Sullivan, sheer classes of him, the faint inside and the pace on the outside. Brad Fittler, always at the heart of the things for Australia, whatever the pressure, always in control, flights the ball and provides a try. And Lamb, the Papua New Guinea uh, scrum half, 
Just look at the vision here. One eye on the opposition, one eye on his own men, and the perfect pass. And then Dean Pay driving in, powerful. A second row normally, but pace for a prop forward. And Andrew Johns here playing in a half-back role, but with the passing skills that caused Bobby Fulton to move him to the hooker. David Wesley, for me, 21 years age, Papua New Guinea, Canberra Raiders prop forward. He took the Kiwi pack on his own at Nosey Road and almost won. And when you're picking a, a second row, you want to tack. Here, Steve Menzies with pace, the power to hand off from Australia. And also, you want defence. And that's why I've gone for Larson, Gary Larson. And you need a footballer at loose forward. Andy Farrell played under a handicap in the, in the final, needed painkillers, but a master kicker and passer of the ball. Yeah, good player and uh, good team this. Two from Wales, three from England, five Australians, two from Papua New Guinea and one New Zealander as well. Joe Lydon has Ray got it about right there. I'd say about right, a very hard job to, uh, to select a team from such a, a massive pool of talent, a job that I, uh, I didn't fancy and that's why Ray picked it. <laughs> We're unlikely to see that team in action, but who would you have as captain? Brad Fittler, perhaps? Well, he, he, he is the captain of the Australians who lifted the trophy, so I think they've got the selection right, so I'll go with him, yeah. Overall, the last three weeks, this Halifax Centenary Rugby League World Cup, what has it done for the sport? Where has it left the sport, Joe? I think it's left, lifted the image. Um, you know, it's, it's been a great tournament. Not only have the fans uh, enjoyed it, the people who have gone along to the games, but also the players that have been involved in it, and it's just left at the right time. Now we have to go forward. Uh, we have the product there. It is a great product to watch and a great game to play as well. And now it's just up to the, uh, the administrators to make sure that they push it forward. Were you surprised? Were you gratified? Certainly at the kind of support that the, the opening group games got, tremendous attendances. Not really, because I think it was a little bit of an unknown quantity. People turned out to watch the island teams play. Um, it's a different style of football, but a very exciting style of, of, of rugby. And um, that's what they came to see, and, and they were pleased with what they saw, I'm sure. And a lot is going to happen, Ray, in the sport over the next couple of seasons. When can we expect the, world, the, the next World Cup? Rumours of a couple of years' time? Well, there is talk of rumours of the World Cup in two years' time with hopefully 16 uh, nations. I think that's a very, very good move. And uh, there's also talk of games in, uh, in Dublin and, uh, and Paris. So I think we can look very, very optimistically um, rugby league-wise. Whether two years is a little too early... I'm not too sure. I personally would go uh, for three, but as long as we could provide the excitement we've had over this, uh, this past month, I'm not really bothered. And have you seen enough young players coming through at international level to excite you as well? Oh yes, um, where I really am excited is with, with England. Ne never mind uh, the defeat, we do have some young players. I mean, people like Cook and Radlinski there uh, in the backs. Jason Robinson is still a very, very young player. Andy Farrell at 20 years of age. Simon Horton at 19 years of age. Never in 100 years has England ever had so many youngsters in an international side. Ray, thanks. Joe, thanks. One day they might beat Australia as well. Wherever rugby league goes over the next 100 years, it can rest assured that the first 100 have been celebrated in some style. The Halifax Centenary Rugby League World Cup has shown that Certainly, globally, the sport is strong, but no one is stronger than those Australians. World champions once again. Bye-bye.